Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome to Sid Meier's Civilization V, Brave New World. I love the Civ games going back from when I first played Civilization I on the SNES, and then played Civ II on the computer, and then it just went from there. I could not miss one. Um, this pack, the Civ V, along with all of its expansions, are available for Steam right now in a nicely priced bundle. A new one's coming up here pretty soon where they head out, where Civilization heads out into space, kind of similar to Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, which is my favorite game of all of Sid Meier's stuff. But um, I haven't really had a strategy game on the channel before, and I thought it was high time to go ahead and get one started. So I haven't really played a whole lot of Civ V. I know, I mean, it's Civilization, you kind of get the gist if you played any of the others, but I'm looking forward to it. So let's do our single player, and we will set up a game. And here's all the civilizations you can choose from. Unlike some of the other games, you can't like choose your own custom name. You have to go with these leaders, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. But we've got China. I mean, the, the list of civilizations here are awesome. It's like we've got Morocco, Greece, Assyria, Songhai, the Huns, Rome, Germany, the Celts. Poland, Russia, Persia, Carthage, England, Venice, Indonesia, India, Mongolia, Sweden, Ethiopia, Denmark, Arabia, the Iroquois, Spain, Polynesia, Portugal, Austria, the Aztecs, France, Babylon, Japan, the Maya, the Inca, Brazil, the Shoshone, Egypt, Siam, Korea, the Zulus, the Ottomans, uh, Byzantium, America, the Netherlands, and China. So a really good... Uh, really good selection of civilizations to choose from. For the purposes of this game, we are going to go with the Shoshone. I love doing the Native American um, tribes in these games because I figure I don't have to make it to Alpha Centauri, which as you know is one of the primary ways you can win the game. I figure as long as I have a thriving civilization where my people are living in peace and harmony, I think I've already succeeded. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Pocatella of the Shoshone. He, um, founded cities start with additional territory, and units receive a combat bonus when fighting within their own territory. And we have access to the Pathfinder and the Comanche Raiders, or Comanche, uh, Riders unit. So we'll do map type of Earth. Standard, uh, map size. Eight players with 16 city-states. That sounds good to me. Actually, can we do huge? Twelve players with 24 city-states. Let's let's do that. Let's go big or go home. Uh, we're going to do normal difficulty of Prince with standard game pacing. And here we go. Blessings be upon you, wise and fearsome Chief Pocatello, revered leader of the Shoshone people. As the young chieftain of the Shoshone, you rose to face a wave of encroaching American settlements across the western United States. Forced to defend the Shoshone ancestral lands from the seemingly endless stream of new immigrants, your war band struck fear into those who would claim the sacred lands of your people. After years of strife, you skillfully avoided a direct conflict with the armies of the U.S. government and negotiated a series of treaties in the hopes of establishing a lasting peace for the Shoshone. Most esteemed Pocatello, your people once again look to you for guidance. Will you conquer your enemies, driving them far from your lands? Or will you seek out peaceful diplomacy and trade? You build a civilization that stands the test of time. Now we got that narration there. I really think the narrator sounds like Liam Neeson. It probably is. In Civ 3 they got, or excuse me, Civ 4, they got Leonard Nimoy to narrate all the stuff like this, so it wouldn't surprise me if Liam Neeson jumped in. And we got our Pathfinder. We start out with the Pathfinder, which is awesome. It possesses a promotion that allows it to choose the benefit when uncovering an ancient ruin, so that's awesome at the start of the game. And then Comanche Riders, which will require horses to build. And let's begin our journey. Oh, we are right next to Wheat. And dies. Look at all the dies. And I saw this during the intro. We are near ancient ruins too. This is a good place to found a city. 
Indeed. Food and resources are plentiful here. We will go ahead and found a city. Look at all the dye and grain. And we're just gonna. I, I I'm aware of how to play, so I'm just gonna kind of skip through the advisors. I miss the advisors from Civ 2, where you could have like a council and talk to all of them, and they would argue. I really miss that. First off, we're going to send our Pathfinder to these ruins. Now, choose Ancient Ruins bonus from list. This is the awesomeness of the Pathfinder. You can convince the reigning population to join one of our cities. We can use this contact with the Lost Tribe to enhance our culture. We can trade for gold, have a look at their maps, we can study their tools to discover a new technology, or use equipment to upgrade your unit. Right now, at the beginning of the game, since we're going to be playing it at Prince difficulty, new technologies are key, so we're going to go with this. Okay, discovered in the ancient ruins are the secrets of an advanced technology. Mining. But not its mineral rights. So now we can construct mines to increase uh, the production of map tiles and chop down forests, allowing the construction of other improvements. So that's really good. Oh, there's another one. Huzzah. Let's choose the production for um, Masan Kani. Thank you very much, advisor. So... Right now, I think our advisors are, um, ex our economic advisor is recommending that we build a monument first and foremost. I guess we will. I'm not worried about um, barbarians because I found out that the cities can actually attack barbars now, which is outstanding. Now we'll choose research. Excuse me. And we have animal husbandry and pottery. Masonry, bronze working, archery. We can build a granary. Each source of wheat and bananas and deer worked by the city produce one food. We have a lot of wheat here, so pottery is definitely our first up. Excuse me. And I think we're in good shape, so let's go ahead and do next turn. And we'll let all the other guys move. City-states were something that were introduced into this game. Um, basically little smaller independent tribes that you could negotiate with and go to war with and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of them spread out through the game. We did choose a huge map. I'm looking forward to basically seeing where this civilization goes. Okay, we know where you're going. You're heading right up here to these ancient ruins, past the dye fields. And after that, I don't know... The river seems to end right here. He may send you up. When there's rivers, there's life. Head up here into these ruins. Now, we convince the rain populace to join one of our cities. Contact to enhance culture. Locate nearby barbarian camps. Gold, look at their maps, or upgrade the unit. Let's go ahead and convince these guys to join the capital. You find survivors lost in the ruins. In gratitude, they settle in one of your cities, increasing its population to two. Groovy, that'll help our uh, our production and our food production, which is sweet. What's that up there? Just doing a little bit of exploring through this huge, vast forest that we're near, and that's the ocean. So it looks like we may be... Well, not on a peninsula. Let's head over here, see if this is the... Oh, it's not the ocean, it was just a hill. Okay. And there's silk. We actually may put these guys to explore automatically. But... I kind of want to... determine where they go... Let's head this way. There's a big mountain range. Ooh, gems. Groovy. And we're three turns away from building our monument. And that, that little thing popping up lets you know it's your turn. 
Let's travel along beside this mountain range. There's sheep. Pocatello has such lovely land. Gotta make sure that this stays with the tribe. However, I didn't it didn't really give us the option to create another settler, which was upsetting. Ooh, desert. Okay, never mind. It looks like we are right here at the border of the rich land. That's why the river ends. And we'll move uh, the, the Pathfinder up here, up the river, once we reach that point here in the desert. In the capital. Cool, we finished the monument. Now... Our military advisor and our foreign advisor are asking us to build another Pathfinder, but our economic and our science advisor says it's time to build a worker. I'm going to go ahead and build a worker. We're not going to be warmongers here, I don't think. However, it would be more exploration, but we're on a huge map, so I'm not really worried about it just yet. Oh wow, that river just peters out as soon as we get here. That's a interesting mountain range. Reminds me of... Uh, near Almogordo, New Mexico. I don't know if anyone, if any of you have ever been to White Sands, but it's very similar to that. Just a big mountain range and then a desert right next to it. So we'll move this way. And I guess the river doesn't count as a road anymore. That was really big in Civ 2. Those kind of mechanics change game to game. And we're four turns away from going up to a population of three. And then the worker can sit here and work in the fields and... Ooh, we expanded. Excellent. Oh, here's some deer. That's very appropriate for a Native American civilization to be near deer. The music's very soothing as well. I haven't really played a whole lot of the other civilizations, so I don't know if the music is a, is is there's, you know. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it? What makest thou? Okay, so now we have the granary and the shrine. Groovy. We'll probably be building a uh, granary next. So, what do we have here? Bronze working, masonry, riding, the calendar, sailing, archery, and animal husbandry. Let's go with animal husbandry. We will eventually learn all the researches. Here's hoping. You guys will keep your trek up the river. Hmm... It looks like we're going into more forest. Or some mountains, maybe. I love the fog of war. Let's move up. Ooh, big white mount snow-covered mountains. And more grain. So we'll probably set our secondary city over here once we get a settler built. I'm trying to see if there's anything I may have missed here. Doesn't look like it though. I have some information. And Mosokane is grown. Awesome. And our worker will be in now in six turns. And our boys will move. Oh, tundra. Wow, we are just. This area has all the terrains. Except for uh, jungle. Which I'm sure we'll probably find here before too much longer. Let's go next turn. 17 turns to go up to 4. Pantheon founded. An unknown civilization has started worshipping a pantheon of gods. They have chosen the belief Dance of the Aurora. Plus 1 faith from the Tundra Tiles without forest. And we can adopt a policy now because we have enough culture. I have some information that... So this is a little bit different. Um, we have tradition, liberty, honor, and piety. Which give us... Tradition is best for small empires. Hmm. Okay. 
Liberty is best for civilizations with desire of rapid expansion. It'll allow culture in every city. Honor increases the, ar the effectiveness of the army. And piety increases the faith. Aristocracy, legalism, oligarchy. Tr Liberty is the republic, citizenship, representation. This seems more the Shoshone vibe. I don't really want to go with the army just yet. That's really not what we're going for. So let's adopt Liberty. Cool. We'll close that and where are our guy? We'll, we're just going to keep on following the river. More ruins discovered. Huzzah. Can we move into them just yet? We'll do that next turn. I bet we're going to be probably, uh, excuse me, probably building a settler. Ooh, barbars. That's not, that's no bueno. But our city can fight them off. That was a, a an additional thing in this game. Let's check the ruins first. Use this contact with Lost Tribe to enhance culture, tribe for gold, look at their maps, or upgrade our units. I think we're going to enhance the culture. You found cultural artifacts with all your citizens. You've received 20 culture. Now we're going to head haul down here and try and take out these barbars. They're not in range of the city yet. The city just is basically a huge archery battery. We're going to head up here. Now we can do the city bombard. We can adopt another policy, which is cool. Republic. Plus one production in every city and plus five production in cities when constructing buildings. Citizenship. Tile improvement construction rate increased by 25% and a worker appears near the capital. We're going to go ahead and do that so more workers are always welcome. Let's close and we are right near the bar bar, so that's bad. Let's uh, head over here. <laughs> And click on this to have the city conduct a ranged attack. Loose! That's awesome. And I also like that the units are a large group of people, like an army, not an individual person. Our pathfinders will keep on heading this way. And next turn. They're probably not going to be happy with us. But they'll live. No, no they won't, actually. If I have my way about it. Cities, like military units, can defend against attack. Okay, let's go ahead and loose. And we are going to head down here. And you guys... I'm just going to go ahead and automate the worker to just build around, build around the city. It's going to build improvements. They're going to stay in the city right now until the barbars are taken care of, though. I'll guarantee it. And we are in our own territory here, so these guys get a defense bonus. So the barbars attacking us would not be wise. Yeah, see? So, let's go ahead and fire. And they are just about to get smited upon. Decisive victory. This should finish them off. There we go. Get out of my house. We have succeeded. Alright guys, now you can go ahead and do what you need to do. Head up and do some farming. And we're going to hit another worker, too, at the end of this turn. It's a dangerous world, and we are vulnerable to attack. Cool. Let's thank you. Let's get through this. Next up is... We have two of our advisors saying we should do calendar. Let's go with that. Let's automate this worker. 
and choose our production. We definitely need to expand the borders or we're going to get left behind. So let's do a settler. And the Pathfinder unit is going to head in here and fortify until healed. And then we'll send him down this way. Because it looks like that's going to lead into an ocean. I would imagine. With the barbars and city states and what we haven't found one city state or one other civilization. We're just kind of left here to our lonesome. There we go. Increase our uh, granaries. All right, are you healed up? Looks like you. No, you're not healed up. Well, maybe you are. Let's head down this way. Where the barbars came from. Maybe we'll find an encampment. And Mosokani will uh, get much more improved with our food and our production with these workers. It's down this way. Um, barbarian encampment discovered. Right next to an oasis. Very cool. Looks like our guys are going to be uh, doing a little bit of warfare. We'll wait for that for the next episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this first one. If you like to go ahead and click like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And I almost forgot. I said in this episode that I was going to announce the winner of week two of my Steam giveaway. And I did a random drawing. And the winner is Toronto. So, grats, Toronto. You win a $25 either game, up to a $25 game or DLC from Steam. Um, for those who don't know about the giveaway, I'm doing this um, every week in September. I'm drawing from our list of subscribers, and you get your name um, added to the drawing again if you comment on any one of my videos. So, just letting you guys know, go ahead and give that a shot. Grats to Ronco. I'll be getting a hold of you here pretty soon for your uh, prize. And anyway, we'll see you all in the next episode. Later days, everyone.